What is going on? It's Alex coming back at you with another video and today we're going to be breaking down the best and worst performances in college football for week number five. If you are new, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You guys know how to use YouTube. Go to that link tree. You're two clicks away from going to anywhere else you want that you get free access for due to the show. But let's get right into this. Let's have a great time. It's going to be broken down by the stars of the week, which these guys are kind of stars of the week anyways, but stars of the stars, then the winners, then those dud of the week, and then the losers. But um, super exciting week. There was a ton of guys that I could not include on here. I had well over 75 uh, different winners, and then I had probably 20 or 30 different guys who would be on the loser side. So feel free to give out some shout outs in the comment section below, and I'll let you know if they made my list. If not, I'll tell you why. Let's get into this, starting out with the stars of the week, Ashton Genty. I mean, uh, who are we getting here, right? Uh, he is unbelievable. I, the fact is 26 carries, 259 yards, four touchdowns, 17 missed tackles force, probably like 30 of them on that one play that uh, is very, very popular. But, uh, you know, versus Washington State, not a bad defense at all. Uh, they did a phenomenal job. Also, shout out to one guy who I didn't get to mention here. One of their edge rushers, I cannot pronounce his name for the life of me, but he ended up having six pressures and seven defensive stops too. So it was pretty much Ashton as well as that defensive lineman that were able to make a massive impact and let Boise really, um, I mean, give Boise the best shot to win. So shout out to Ashton. He's doing a phenomenal job. Top 20 might not even be uh, respectable enough. He might be one of those guys who goes as high as uh, Bijan Robinson did in the top 10. But keep your eyes out for that. I mean, it's another incredible performance. And, um, you know, somebody who is clearly cut as now the RB1 of the class. Uh, still no fumbles. And that is the biggest win because he was RB1 if he never had any fumbles. Had five last year and so far zero this year while still being unbelievable. I cannot make this list without shouting Arch Manning out. That's why I say best and worst performances in college football because you know, this is 2025 draft projection and doing a stock report of 2025 draft players doesn't allow me to have fun while choosing guys who aren't actually draft eligible. So Arch Manning, um, got to give him a shout out, 26 completions, 335 yards, two touchdowns, three big time throws, zero turnover worthy plays, five carries, 34 yards and a touchdown as well. 93 passing grade as well. A uh, phenomenal job for Arch, who, uh, when he did his first spring game, looked really, really stiff, really rattled. Um, obviously, it's been a little bit of time since that, but you know, being able to have that first impression just absolutely vaporized by his unbelievable play is fantastic. Of course, I cannot give all this credit to Arch without being able to give credit to that offensive line. Only one pass, uh, only one pressure allowed and I think it was that one play where he ended up throwing that big passing uh, I think it might have been a touchdown but you know big time throw absolutely and um, you know all the offensive line got 83 or higher pass blocking grades so fantastic job I mean against Mississippi State it's not a competition that's extremely weak that's an SEC school so shout out to Arch Manning shout out to uh, Texas like they really did perform very valiantly everybody was able to contribute except for Amari Nyblack Ooh. That's a conversation for another day, though. Continuing on, Harold Fannin is next. And you guys are probably like, Alex, you have three stars or maybe four stars of the week. This is the first week with five stars, um, and you'll see why. But I digress. Harold Fannin, uh, he had another monster week. 12 targets, 12 receptions, 192 yards, two touchdowns, two missed tackles forced, 92 receiving grade. Um, this guy continues to blow my mind every single time uh, and he's someone who's unbelievably reliable he's amazing after the catch he has made me want to shift my tight end grading system to focus more heavily on the after the catch effect which i honestly think is perfectly logical so because of harold fan and i think i'm going to be redoing my grading system for tight ends because i really do see a bright future for this guy in the nfl and Tight ends don't need to be wide receivers in terms of their route running. They just need to generate enough separation through physicality or route running. But the real difference when you see these tight ends is not whether they get open through route running. It's either domination at the catch point or it's after the catch ability. And um, Harold Fannin Jr. Like, it kind of reminds me of Isaiah Likely in that regard. He's 230. However, um, really, really, really good tight end there. Now, continuing on, you got Jalen Milrow. Of course, I'm not going to leave this guy out. Uh, you know, this they haven't really had very many challenging performances 
this year. Like USF, in my opinion, might have been their most challenging due to their uh, difficult defense. But this was versus Georgia, their biggest test. And my God, like talk about talk about being unbelievably improved. Now, he is known to be extremely raw, decision making, yada, yada. And now listen to this. 27 of 33. Guess what? Three of those incompletions were drops. So he had over a 90% adjusted completion percentage, 374 yards, two passing touchdowns, one interception. The thing is, he had four big time throws and zero turnover worthy plays. I think that's a little bit more of a key stat than looking at that interception. Now, here's the kicker. That already might have put him on this list. Actually, it would have definitely put him on the list. Maybe not been the star of the week because I'm a stickler when it comes to, you know, doing anything more than three stars, but certainly not more than four because I think we know who the fifth star is and it's also in this game. But he also had 18 carries, 113 yards and two more rushing touchdowns, a 92 pass, uh, 92 passing grade, three missed tackles forced. And this dude's athleticism popped off more in this game than I've ever seen before. Real NFL quarterbacks rise up when the challenge is right in their face. Now, it doesn't mean that they always have to play 100% of the game at 100%, but when the big moments come up, they play their best. And Jalen Milrow showed that he is an NFL quarterback. And, you know, being able to learn behind Justin Fields if he wants to take an extra year, sign me up. I'm a Steelers fan, so I'm going to say the dream fits the Steelers right now. But you can insert a plethora of teams. You could even have Green Bay to have them be trained up and be able to be moved on from. Who gives a shit? At the same, like the ultimate thing is that Jalen Milrow has done a fantastic job showing the development in someone who a lot of us really saw as a really good playmaker who really needed to develop as a passer. And he did exactly that versus arguably the biggest test that you could ask for at the moment. So Excellent job by Jalen Milrow. I could easily say top 10, top five. Fuck the projection. We'll go top five for right now. You know what? Screw it. Uh, he's doing a fantastic job. Very, very, very well deserved. Now, of course, I cannot allow uh, for my buddy right there in Jalen Milrow to be able to get all the credit. Ryan Williams, 17 years old. He had six targets, seven receptions, 177 yards, and a touchdown. And did an unbelievable job after the catch. Um, you know, just somebody who exemplifies excellence. And, you know, at the end of the day, 374 passing yards, three, 177 of them, of them were to Ryan Williams. And talk about clutch. Um, you know, you guys ended up getting a lead early. And then some things kind of just got a little bit clunky in that second half. Georgia had their comeback. And, you know, you guys still were able to, again, put it all together in the end. That's what matters the most. So fantastic job by you guys, honestly. And I know that there were some fourth down conversions that were just stuff. So there's just a little bit of a momentum shift that happened there. But you guys ended up coming back and being able to really, really shine. So 2027, <laughs> there we go. Super excited for Ryan Williams. So continuing on, I mean, talk about stars of the week, right? Like all those guys had unreal performances. Uh, but I mean, the thing is 70 something guys ended up being winners this week. So, and some of those guys, actually, I mean, there could have been 80 or 90. I started getting a little bit of fatigue adding dudes to the winner's list, as long as I knew they weren't going to make this list. However, transparency aside, uh, let's focus on our other, quotes stars of the week. Not the stars of the stars. Donovan Aziruaku. I do not say that correctly, I will admit. And um, to be fair, I owe it to the guy because he is fantastic. The thing is, five pressures. Honestly, that's good enough to make it onto the winner's list for me if you're efficient and got five pressures. I think he was also the top-graded defender for Boston College. Uh, the thing is, nine defensive stops. That is unbelievably well-rounded. He got, got, could have gotten one pressure and nine stops, and I might have considered him for this list. Uh, but another guy who arguably could have been considered to be someone who is a star of the stars of the week. Trey Harris is next. Uh, 15 targets, 11 receptions, 176 yards, and a touchdown. He did end up having a drop, but 261 passing yards for his team, 176 to him. Uh, fantastic job, obviously. If you guys follow me over on Twitter, I ended up going after the safety Love It, who I will be, say full transparency, he's a good run defender, but 
And do not put this guy in one-on-one -on -one coverage versus NFL receivers. I'm just saying that right now um, because I ended up roasting him and then he ended up commenting on that and followed me. So I don't know if I'm going to get a nasty DM anytime soon or else the guy's just going to be lurking and laughing at me. It's okay. It's all fun and games. Um, you know, Kentucky is a school you guys know I am pretty partial to because of Andrew Phillips, but I digress. Um, you know, Trey Harris, this is the Trey Harris show. Still did a fantastic job. You know, again, one drop, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I'm still going to give someone who gets 11 targets, 176 yards, and a touchdown, especially when that is well over 50% of the team's receiving yards, a ton of credit. Again, another guy who could have been, like in most weeks, a Ziruku or Ziruaku as well as Trey Harris probably would have been stars of the week. Will Lee is next. He was, I think, my corner 18 coming into the year. He had two uh, two completions on seven targets, and he allowed 13 yards. But here's the kicker. Three pass breakups on three pass breakups for the whole team. So he's the only one on his team with pass breakups. Uh, I ended up showing a rep versus uh, Xavier Worthy on Twitter. So, again, use that, use that link tree, guys. You can use it for... Other reasons as well, like underdog fantasy. Sends me 60 bucks, you get up to a thousand in bonus cash, two clicks away. I'm telling you. Um, to be fair, for those of y'all who are wondering, it does end up helping. It does help pay the bills, but I end up using it anyways. So I it would just be cool. But at the end of the day, I'm not desperate for cash. I just like to be able to promote it. And then it's kind of cool when you get some cash on the side as well. But continuing on. Uh Will Lee did a fantastic job on Twitter though. I ended up having a referee where he ended up um, breaking up a pass on a slant by uh, Xavier Worthy. So, you know, certainly a player who I will need to continue restudying uh, because three pass breakups, I want to see as to why, but um, coaching tape should be dropped today. So we'll get excited to dig into that. Uh, Hodge Malik Williams is next. Uh, you know, first off, UNLV's quarterback, who they're, I think, I think they were 3-0 with, um, he was just like, well, these guys are not paying me remotely what they told me that they'd pay me. So I'm out. Big story. And it's like, damn, dude. I mean, like, I love Ricky Will or Ricky White. And it's like, this is going to be a big blow to him. Hodge Malik Williams is like, hold up, guys. We're playing Fresno State, a damn good school. I'm going to show you guys you didn't need to pay that guy at all, which they do need to pay him. If you say you're going to pay somebody, pay him, UNLV. Come on now. But. Uh, you know, first off, 16 completions, 182 yards, three touchdowns, one big time throw, zero turnover worthy plays. And first off, for coming in as a backup and being able to do that in a really, really, really dominant performance, awesome. But then 12 carries, 119 yards, one touchdown, seven missed tackles forced. He had a 90 pass and a 90 run grade. Um, that right there is clutch. Had to give him a shout out because again, like, that is just a legitimately incredible performance. If my math serves me correctly, that is uh, 301 all-purpose yards with two touchdowns. And, um, you know, that is well worth being able to be mentioned here, especially since he was, you know, pretty much a non-factor a couple weeks ago or a couple days ago before the quarterback um, of UNLV ended up bowing out. But continuing on, uh, Travis Hunter, got to give this dude a shout out. I mean, I pretty much could do it every single week. He's on the winner's list every single week. However, um, you know, the thing is he made big plays on both sides of the ball and he was dominant on both sides of the ball. As a receiver, uh, 10 targets, nine receptions, 75 yards and a touchdown. Not as crazy as performance, but it's still a damn good one. On defense though, five targets, two receptions, 25 yards allowed, interception and a pass breakup and a defensive stop. Well-rounded well, -round, well -rounded performance against someone who I could easily... Um, put as a star of the week that's a, just for most weeks this is this is a weird week the fact that we had so many incredible performances um, but continuing on Vincent Anthony Jr. edge rusher out of Duke uh, we got two players from Duke on this list first off I did not expect that I was like you know we're just gonna fly through the grades by the way I check out every single and I'm my opinion translatable game uh, which is the majority of games and I end up looking at every single player's statistics to see if I can end up finding some dudes who are starting to trend that was just not being talked about. It's good for me. It's good for you guys as well to be able to see those names. But guys like Vincent, and Vincent Anthony Jr. and Star Thomas from Duke were not names I was expecting to put on this list. However, for Vincent Anthony, he had nine pressures, two defensive stops, and an 88 defensive grade. 
Uh, nine pressures on their own easily makes it onto one of these lists. Like that is just consistent dominant performance. And Duke did not win by a noticeable amount, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, if my memory serves me correctly. It was a pretty damn close game. So because of Vincent Anthony Jr. And then Star Thomas, who had 31 carries, 182 yards in a touchdown with 16 missed tackles forced. They won the game. Those two players won them the game. Nobody else but those two players. So fantastic job to them. Abdul Carter finally, finally did something. Hallelujah. And he had one hell of a breakout game. Like deep down, I had this guy as what my edge seven coming into the year. And I was like, you know, I'm higher than the majority of people who like this guy. Like a lot of people did not have him remotely that high. The people who do mock drafts are the ones are like the ones who do a lot of projection. Like they're going to be having him super high because they're going to try to pull it out of their ass that he's going to have a big breakout game. And that's not really like, in my opinion, that's not fair to you guys. That's pretty poor analysis to essentially exclusively project on something that is that we don't have enough information to project. It's not like Mikel Williams where it's like, okay, well, we know the talent and we're assuming he's going to get a little bit better. Mikel is moving or no, excuse me. Abdul is moving from linebacker to edge. So I actually was pretty pretty positive about Abdul. And, um, you know, unless you were really kind of pulling it out of your tush, nobody would have put Abdul as high as like edge seven in this class at the start of the year. So, um, you know, I'm proud of the fact that, you know, I liked enough of his game to where I liked how well-rounded he was. Um, but he was having a really disappointing start, really disappointing start. Like his first game, I don't think, I think oh, maybe one pressure. I don't even know if he got a pressure. It was just really disappointing. And then the next week, and then the next week. And I'm like, come on, Abdul. And this week, eight pressures versus Illinois, by the way, which they have two really solid tackles. And both of them kind of got embarrassed. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, eight pressures, 91 defensive grade, four stops, and a pass breakup. This is what I'm talking about. That is the Abdul Carter that could be worth a first-round pick. If he is able to keep this up, easily a first-round pick. That performance is what we've been waiting for. I had my doubts, and he ended up making me very happy. And he will be higher than Edge 7, especially with Harold Perkins tearing his ACL and all that. But even based on his talent level, that game, especially if it can be at a very minimum remotely maintained, will get him in the first round. Zero doubt in my mind. Fantastic job. Elijah Roberts and Kobe Wilson. So I was at the SMU game. Um, shout out to my buddy. Actually, one of his parents ended up not being able to make the trip. He actually flew from uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, and his mom couldn't come. So they're like, we have an extra ticket. I actually got denied credentials for one game, and this is the one game I got denied. And I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Um, but he ended up taking me. So shout out to my boy Clayton right there. Um, good man. But, you know, I was able to watch this in person, which people were like, why aren't you commenting on the Georgia Alabama game? And I'm like, my friends, I literally have garbage connection. I am um, witnessing SMU actually being able to beat Florida State. Now, again, Florida State is right now not what we think Florida State is, but I digress. Uh, Elijah Roberts, nine pressures, three stops. Remember that nine pressure number? You bet your ass you're going to be stuck on this list. But Elijah was in the backfield the whole game. Um, we'll talk about the Florida State side very soon. Kobe Wilson, though, I've seen a good amount of football. Like I've seen even Nathan Rourke in the preseason be, is it Nathan? Whoever the hell Rourke in the NFL um, end up throwing one of the most insane touchdown passes when he was on the Jaguars versus the Dallas Cowboys. And that was probably the most crazy play I've ever seen in person. Kobe Wilson with the final second pick six. It wasn't final second, but it was in the last minutes pick six. Oh my God. I just remember first off seeing DJ throw a pass to literally like, I mean, this guy technically could have had a little bit of separation, but Kobe ended up lurking it. And um, I, I saw him running back and I'm like super hyped, right? I think pick six, you guys can confirm or deny this. If you've seen a pick six in person, it is the most enjoyable football play you will ever see because it's like two insane, unexpected outcomes in the same play which is, you know, obviously the interception and then the pick six. But this was three insane outcomes or insane moments where he ended up lurking. 
getting the interception. And then if you guys watch the rep, he ended up being tackled from behind and he ended up, I think, hurtling one of his own guys while shedding, or maybe he just hurtled one of his own guys, but he ended up going to the end zone and then carrying Lawrence Tofili on his back into the end zone for a touchdown. Um, literally the most wild play I've ever seen. But not only is he on this list because of that, he had a 90 defensive grade and a 90 coverage grade. He had two pressures, three defensive stops, and zero receptions allowed on two targets with that pick six. Uh, you know, so shout out to Kobe Wilson for giving me probably the best football memory I've ever had in my life. Um, you know, that was just honestly something that I'll probably carry to my grave. So awesome. Go SMU, FFSU. And uh, yeah, we're, we're a part of the ACC, baby. And let's go talk about the stock down. Speaking of, I'm going to piss some people off by doing uh, this graphic, but that's okay. Uh, I actually am very entertained by this graphic. Um, watching a future McDonald's employee of the year right here. I mean, DJU has been such a disappointment. It's a team that I honestly thought could have been making it to um, actually win it all. And I don't know why he is this bad. Like he hasn't shown to be this bad in on his previous years, even though he had his moments. But 12 completions uh, or 12 completions on 31 attempts, 222 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. That wouldn't land you as a dud of the week. Zero big time throws, four turnover worthy plays, two fumbles. Not to mention getting his ass stuffed on the goal line in back to back quarterback runs. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, he had, I think, five carries for six yards with two fumbles. Um, just an abysmal performance. At the end of the day, there's just no way he actually does anything in the league. I'd be very happy to be proven wrong because, again, I had faith in Florida State to be able to win a championship this year. And um, simply not the case. But continuing to the stock down, away from the McDonald's logo. Maybe I'll get sued for using their logo, but that's okay. We love them anyways. That won't happen. I mean, it's the end of the day, but no one's going to do that. But uh, Jaden Roberts, got to talk about him. Alabama had a lot going well for him that game. But allowing four pressures and 21 pass blocking grade, it's not part of what was going well. Uh, Jaden Roberts has continued to prove that he's raw. I really don't know if he can survive at guard in the NFL, if he's going to do that versus Georgia's defensive interior, which, in my opinion, not a great defense interior. Tyler Booker didn't even do too well either. I was quite surprised at the uh, lack of you know, dominance from both of those guys. Um, I didn't put Tyler Booker as a loser this week because he had just an overall solid grade. There's obviously plenty of... Um, I mean, it's just Jaden Roberts, especially that 21 pass blocking grade. That got me. That got me. And that sucks because you guys know I really have a lot of faith in Jaden Roberts. Uh, but I do think that it might be time to give up on him as a guard because he just looks very uncomfortable and um i think that he belongs as a tackle i really do but continuing on uh antoine juice wells man talk about disappointing by the way uh, you know he uh ended up coming in and i i ended up watching this game uh two targets zero receptions including a drop i mean this is somebody that in pff is listed as a top 64 player on their board if i'm not mistaken and someone who I really, really like, but I think he tore his ACL early last year and then goes to Ole Miss, and so far he hasn't done anything. And especially when Trey Harris is getting 176 yards, like you're not able to get 25, 30, 40 yards? That would have saved him from this list because it's like, hey, at least Trey Harris just had a day. But also the drop was a really bad drop. It was like right on the money too. So uh, very disappointing from Juice Wells. RJ Oban is next. This guy's just done nothing there for Notre Dame, which is a big surprise. Because again, when you guys started at, when you guys heard me at the start of the year, I'm like, Notre Dame's a dark horse team. I mean, they won this game. So shout out to them for doing that. But it's like, hey, RJ Oban, Bo Collins, um, Riley Leonard, like they hit the jackpot in terms of transfer talent for college. And to be fair, I mean, we'll talk about Bo in a second, but RJ Open hasn't done anything. Riley Leonard hasn't been a massive asset, but he actually did a pretty solid job this week. But continuing on to Bo Collins, he's been the most reliable target until this week, where he had four, uh, four targets, one reception, five yards, two drops. Like, come on, Bo. Like, I, I stick my neck out for this guy because I really do believe in him. Two drops. I got to go and look at the coaching tape just to like make sure as to why the hell he dropped it. But um, obviously a 
especially in a win, I was hoping that he'd be a big reason why they'd be winning. Keon Saab is next. Um, this hurts, but 43 defensive grade, six targets, four receptions, 132 yards and a touchdown. Um, nothing positive, unfortunately, to write about that. Uh, Keon Saab, like he's still going to be someone who has his moments, but this is his first big slip up game. I'm praying that he bounces back from it because he's had some really good games this year. Uh, but this was a game where it would have been really key against a lot of very good weapons to be able to lock him down, and he did not. And then we're going to continue on to uh, Mikel Williams and Oscar Delp. So on the other side of the ball during that game, uh, you got uh, Mikel, zero pressures, zero stops, literally a non-factor. In a game where Georgia lost, that is a key stat that I'm looking at. Jalen Walker outperformed him. Didn't do unbelievably well, but still noticeably outperformed Mikel Williams. Uh, very, very, very disappointing. Very disappointing, bottom line. Oscar Delp, uh, zero target, or zero target, zero completions on two targets and a drop. Just like, talk about being phased out, man. Like, that it just hurts. I mean, you could substitute, like, him being, like, absolutely hyped up in the photo below my face for him pretty much crying at this point. It, it's it been a really dismal season for the tight ends. It was a good group coming in, like, oh, look at all this talent. A lot of these guys need to return or transfer because it is not looking good. Then we got J.C. Davis. I also got to mention the right tackle, whose name is slipping my mind, but um, both of these guys struggled big time both of them had pass blocking grades in the 30s uh but jc davis specifically had four pressures and a 35 pass block the right tackle i'm forgetting had five pressures and i think a 37 pass blocking grade uh bottom line not acceptable especially for guys who some people really had hope from being an nfl tackle and i'm excited because i haven't been able to grade these players because all 22 on illinois offense has been very very scarce finally we get it we're gonna be able to get it i'm super hyped for that because uh, they obviously went up against Penn State's defense, which um, I think my source has been pretty damn solid at being able to provide that. But continuing on, uh, this is a kick in my nuts because I ended up restudying Davison Igbenison versus Marshall, and I'm going to obviously regrade him again. Um, but, you know, he was someone who continues grading very well for me. And then this game versus Michigan State ended up having one defensive stop, five targets, four receptions, 69 yards, and a touchdown for a 47 defensive grade, the worst grade on the defense, um, something I don't like, but something I do notice about Igbenison is the fact that he doesn't look back for the ball. And uh, very similar to Dalen Everett, like very physical, you know, someone who is really, really solid IQ and just does not look for the ball. So I'm really hoping that that will change. Obviously, Ohio State defense is something that comes out every single week. So he'll be getting regraded again, as I will do. Every time a player struggles, I'm going to put that into their grade. Um, some people ask about Miller Moss. He will be graded again. That's just the way it rolls. And then Malachi Starks, defensive back out of Georgia. To end it off, he didn't have nearly as bad of a performance as like, the names above, but uh, he had two defensive stops. He had 56 defensive grade, six targets, five receptions, 65 yards. Just um, especially in a loss, it's a performance I really wish Malachi had an actual like game-changing play, even a pass breakup, interception. Uh, and then just didn't really. So that is going to be the video. Obviously, this is a bit of a longer one, but this is a really crazy week. So hopefully you enjoyed. I love you guys. See you on the far side. Peace.